On today's episode, I pose and edit a cafe racer corker. Here's how, play tape. And cut. Is that all I need to say? What's happening team? Welcome to Brighton, home of the mods and the rockers. And this is where it all happened. No prizes for guessing which one I am, although I'm about 10 years too young. <laughs> and I've come down on my Harley Davidson 48 and she's my prized possession. She's called Agatha. And I'm hopefully gonna do a nice photograph in this beautiful gold now sunshine. So let's set up. So I'm opting for my 24mm Sigma Art 1.4 lens, which is one of my favourite lenses and it's razor sharp. This is my composition down on the promenade. It has lovely depth down the side of the music hall and that dark arch window behind the bike should give me nice separation and some framing. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing interval shooting, which means I'm going to manually focus on the middle of the bike and then I'm going to set it to interval shooting so it just takes around 30 images so I can get into the shot and then just take some different poses and, and that way I've got a variety of shots. I'm at f6.3 and ISO 200 and uh, shutter speed's around 200 per second. So I'm going to do three uh, plate shots. Um, one for the sky, exposing for the sky, one for the shadows and one for the mid-tones as well. Because I'm shooting in the direction of the sun, the dynamic range from highlights to shadows will be greater than the camera can handle. So two or three exposure blended images may be necessary in post. Okay team, I'm back. Helmet. Huh? Ah. <sighs> okay, time for some exposure blending. So here in Lightroom we have a shortlisted selection of images from the photo shoot and the two in particular which I'm going to exposure blend together are the image I exposed for the biker and the image I exposed for this post and everything to the left. So let's start with some basic adjustments and straight onto the highlights to about negative 40. And the shadows will bump to around plus 30. I'll crush those blacks a touch to around negative 12. Clarity, not too much, plus 20 should do it. And I'll get rid of some of that haze at plus 10. Then focusing on the skin tones, Bump the luminance of the reds and oranges. Finally, increase the sharpness a little over the default amount and enable lens correction for the Sigma Art 24mm lens. Now for the background image. I'll increase the exposure by a hair, highlights the same amount as the first image, 
Shadows around plus 20. I'll leave the clarity alone and head straight down to the profile corrections. And that's it. Now time to ship them across to Photoshop. So I'll select both images, head up to Photo, Edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now we have both images stacked in their own layers, but there is a slight discrepancy in the alignment due to camera shift when reviewing the images when I was on location. So I'll just reduce the opacity to 50% and zoom in on that first post and nudge the top layer until they align. Okay, now for the fun part, blending the two images together. Firstly, I'll add a layer mask to the biker layer then choose a brush tool and make it a nice soft edge brush and just start revealing the underlying layer up to the first post. Now to soften the blend, toggle the brush to a white brush by pressing X. Then take the flow to 3%. I'll just swap back to the black brush and transition this area. And this is a creative eye process. So let's disable the mask and see my progress. And that's a good start but I think it needs a little vignette in the top right hand corner. Now I think we need to bring back some detail in the roof here. So I'll create a curves adjustment layer and drag up the curve. Then invert the mask with Control or Command I. Then with the white brush tool, flow at 100%, just reveal the adjustment to that area. Here's a quick before and after, and that's much better. So I'm happy with the exposure blended composite now. So to simplify things, I'm going to stamp the layers down to one layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E. Then rename the layer to Stamp. And next up, I'll just tidy up the floor with a spot healing brush tool. Now for some dodge and burn. Create another curves adjustment layer, drag up the curve, and then invert the mask with Control or Command I. Then with the brush at 5% flow, set it to white because white reveals, and just begin creating some contours on the skin. And every now and then just check your progress by switching off the layer. Next up, I'm going to replace the seagull that I spot removed earlier. So here's a stock image, which I'll use the object selection tool. And that's made a good job. Then press Ctrl or Command C to copy, head back to the main image, then Ctrl or Command V to paste. Then use the transform tool and resize and place where it looks realistic. And I'll just match the colors with a curves adjustment layer. Clip it to the seagull layer, so the adjustments only affect that layer. I'll bring in the black point to darken the shadows, and add some reds and yellows. And a quick before and after. Now for some burning. I'll create yet another curves adjustment layer. Bring down the exposure, and add some reds and yellows into the mix. 
Then invert the layer with Ctrl or Command I. And with a soft white brush, 5% flow, begin burning the road and the sky. I'll just check my progress. And I think I'll go more intense on the shadows on the floor. So pressing P on the keyboard for the pen tool, create a path around the shadows. Convert it to a selection and go back to the brush tool again, and this time with 100% flow. Then press D to deselect and repeat the process for the other shadow. So we're almost there. So I'm going to stamp down the layers again with Control, Alt, Shift and E and rename the layer to Camera Raw. Then head up to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. And just add some further clarity. And I'm going to remove the effect from the distant objects with a mask layer. And here's the big reveal. Right, that's a time out, people. Thank you, as always, for donating some of your precious time to me. Hit the subscribe button below and check out my other videos where I take trips, pics, and generally muck about with cameras.